This is the epic story of one of the most unbelievable cruise ship disasters of all time. A story of officers abandoning passengers and leaving them to die. It's a tale of tragedy and fortune, of cowardice and courage. This is the bizarre story of the sinking of the MTS Oceanos. It's August 3rd, 1991, and the budget Greek cruise ship, the Oceanos, is on its final day of a week-long cruise in South Africa. All they have left is the short distance between the port of East London and Durban. But the weather is rough, and the captain's decision to still set sail despite the worsening conditions would prove to be fatal. As a rusty old liner navigates the treacherous waters of the wild coast, known for its shark-infested waters and nautical graveyard, passengers are still enjoying their festive dinner and evening entertainment. But at 9.30pm, everything changes. A sudden bang echoes through the ship, and all power is lost. Ten minutes pass with no announcement or explanation, and then the emergency lights come back on, and the show goes on. The comedian continues his performance, the guitarist keeps playing, and the passengers are none the wiser. After another 30 minutes, one of the passengers casually strolling around witnesses the unbelievable. The ship's navigational crew, including the first, second and third officer, all board the only motorized lifeboat and abandon the ship. They never told anyone and they were never seen on board again. Meanwhile, unwitting passengers are still singing and partying in the lounge, not knowing what's going on. The ship's lead guitarist becomes suspicious of the lack of announcements and heads to the lifeboat area only to see the captain trying to flee. He confronts him and asks whether the ship is sinking, to which the captain vehemently denies and says, quote, This is just a precaution. Everything is fine. The guitarist then heads downstairs to see for himself, and what he finds is again unimaginable. As the ship's tragic fate becomes clear, the truth of the events leading up to the disaster comes to light. A week earlier, the Oceanos had hit a rock while leaving port, causing damage to its hull. But instead of reporting the incident and getting the damages assessed, the crew chose to cover it up and sail on. Then today, strong waves ripped open the damaged sea chest and flooded the engine room with water. Even though the crew immediately closed off the watertight compartments, a pipe that was left open in unfinished repairs spread the water throughout the lower floors, effectively guaranteeing the ship's doom. As the water continues to rise, the ship's guitarist and cruise director take charge, telling passengers to put on their life vests and head for the lifeboats. But out of the eight lifeboats on board, which together would have been more than enough for everyone, only a few were left. The others had already launched half filled with crew members that had stuffed it with their suitcases and valuables. Many women and children were squeezed on the remaining lifeboats amidst gale-strung winds and lowered into the relentlessly rough ocean. In the chaos, the captain again tries to board a lifeboat, arguing that he can organize a rescue operation better from land, but he's pulled back by the crew's director. Once all functional lifeboats are lowered, roughly 240 passengers remain stranded on board. With the ship listing heavily and sinking fast, the chances of survival are slim. As hours tick by and no help seems to be on the way, the guitarist and magician decide to head to the bridge to check on the captain and see if help is coming. But to their shock, they find an empty bridge with no one in charge of the rescue operation. The guitarist takes over the radio, issuing a desperate Mayday call. He was very calm and he just said, yes, you know, what's your Mayday? And I said, with the cruise ship Oceanus, we're sinking. He said, what rank are you? And I said, well, I'm not a rank, I'm, I'm just a guitar player. And he was saying, well, what are you doing on the bridge? And I said, well, there's nobody else here on the bridge. Where's the captain? I said, well, he's not here. Well, where's the captain? Get him. I said, he's not here. Finally, in the early morning hours, South African helicopters arrive to airlift the passengers to safety one by one. At this point, the captain, who has done nothing to help the ongoing operation, has his cowardice shine through once more, 
as he sneaks to the front of the line, pushing to the side, waiting elderly as he is hoisted off the ship and into safety. Soon thereafter, tragedy strikes again, as a married couple is not properly harnessed during the rush of their rescue. As the helicopter lifts them up, the husband starts to slide, grabbing onto his wife. Nearly a hundred feet above the ocean, he realizes he can't hold on any longer, and plummets into the sea. With limited time left and with each chopper only able to fit 20 passengers before having to go back to shore, the operation continues at a rapid pace. Even with six helicopters, it won't be enough. Realizing this, some passengers decide to jump into the rough shark infested water and swim to a nearby zodiac. As the number of remaining passengers dwindles, the ship suddenly lifts even more heavily, making it nearly impossible to stand up. But miraculously, the last 10 on board, including the magician, guitarist and cruise director, are all safely rescued. 14 hours after the start of this tragedy, the ship is finally abandoned. Just 7 minutes later, the MTS Oceano sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Back on shore, the mood is celebratory, but someone is missing, George Walton the man who fell nearly a hundred feet into the ocean. His wife looks around frantically, hoping to spot him somewhere. But he's not there. Roughly half an hour later, like a miracle, George appears. A Navy member who was helping with the operation saw him fall and heroically jumped into the water, swimming over a mile before pulling the unconscious man to another ship's lifeboat. In a rescue operation like no other, miraculously, everyone survived. But this is not where this story ends. It just gets more bizarre. Back on land, South African authorities begin the investigation into the sinking. Meanwhile, the captain gets bombarded by the media and is trying desperately to defend himself abandoning ship. When I order a of the ship, it doesn't matter what time I leave. A bad one is for everybody. If some people they like to stay, they can stay. A few days later, the Greek consulate secretly helped the captain and his officers flee the country to avoid being prosecuted. In Greece, an inquiry board then found them negligent in their handling of the disaster, but they were never sentenced nor punished. In fact, Captain Avranos kept his license and was reinstated and continued sailing. But luck was not on his side and within a year, another one of his ships caught fire and capsized. His wife then wrote a book on the events, defending her husband and bashing the media's cruel attacks on him. So I'm sure she won't love this video. A Pirotiki cruise line, the owner of the Oceanos, vehemently defended their officers and even praised them for saving everyone. But given that three of their nine ships sank within just two years, I don't know if we should take their word for it. While overall this story might seem like one of treachery and cowardice, it's also one of incredible heroism and bravery. The passengers and entertainment staff of the Oceanos came together in a time of crisis and rose to the challenge in ways that are truly awe-inspiring. Many put the safety of others before their own and through their joint actions they remind us that even in the darkest of moments, the human spirit is capable of miraculous things. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for weekly traveling content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.